Uh, good evening, everybody, and you're welcome to uh, Ibeji Day Celebration. My name is Olu Shegunkende. I'm a medical practitioner and I'm based in Shepparton. And assisting me today is uh, Mrs. Olajumoke Ojo. She's a nurse midwife and uh, she's based in Melbourne. So it's a pleasure to uh, have you all uh, present with us here. Um, Mrs. Adetefa, who is the convener of this meeting, asked me several months ago to uh, do this presentation. And I know I would be talking to uh, maybe a lay public. I know there are medical people amongst us. So, and I know there are also kids. So I've tried to uh, make the presentation very simple. Um, I'm Kainde. Kainde is my surname or family name. And twins have skipped my generation at least for my family for two generations now. It's my paternal grandfather that is uh, a twin. My father didn't have a twin. His own uh, siblings didn't have a twin. And myself and my siblings too, nobody has had twins. So, um, but we're still very happy to be associated with Kainde. And that's our family name. Okay. Again, Mrs. Adefa gave me a very difficult job, but I think I found an easy way around. Uh, if kids ask their pregnant mom, mom, what's in your tummy? Is it a big bowl of pounded yam? And mom says, no, it's a baby. The next question is, how did the baby get inside there? Is it a boy or a girl? Well, uh, the way I've phrased my topic I'll be able to get around that question in a very simple way. And if you need more details, talk to daddy and talk to mommy. So I'll be talking on how twins are formed. Uh, I'll put it this way. When daddy and mommy wants to have a baby, they talk to one another. And daddy bring something to the table and mommy brings something to the table and by the time those two things come together a baby is formed naturally a woman every month would ovulate and the egg that the woman produces which is what the woman brings to the table you know under right circumstances if it meets with what daddy brings to the table which is a sperm. The two unite, and from that union, which you call fertilization, over the next nine months, a series of processes happen. Those cells keep dividing, keep multiplying, and then eventually you have a full grown baby that is delivered at nine months. And the beautiful thing about babies, you don't buy babies in the market so the baby comes from your womb and from your loin and there's that emotional attachment that this is not just a piece of article or a car or something i bought off the shelf this is part of me you look like me you resemble me you carry my genes and you are mine you are god given you are god sent and that's the beauty about having kids now I said women just once a month will ovulate and release an egg, which under right circumstances if you get fertilized, then a baby starts to grow. In some special circumstances, we don't know what causes it or we don't know why it happens. Rather than one egg being released, you have two eggs being released. If you have two eggs being released at the same time and those two eggs get fertilized, you have two babies. And that sort of pregnancy, we call them fraternal twins. They are no more uh, than a brother and sister or a brother and a brother, a, bro a sister and a sister born at different times. It just happens that the way nature plans it, we don't know how it happens. Instead of the ovary or the woman releasing one egg per 
cycle of that month may release two and the two can get fertilized at the same time another important thing i want to mention is that when it's um when an egg is released there are millions and millions of sperms working around it but only one sperm eventually gets to fertilize it and once that sperm has fertilized it and that union has taken place none else can go in okay i've got some slides and i'm going to uh go through those slides very quickly just to give you an idea of what happens now i've said sometimes i mean generally speaking only one egg is released and most people will have a single a, a single thing pregnancy but there are times when two eggs are released and both of them get fertilized at the same time and instead of one baby sharing the uh, self-contained apartment in mommy's womb you have two people cohabiting at the same time in some special instances it's only one egg that is released but after that egg is released and it is fertilized it divides into two very early in the process of multiplication and growth and when that happens you have a set of twins those are the ones we call identical twins and usually they share the same genes they look alike and they're usually of the same sex so that is the simple way it happens and again i must emphasize nobody knows why it happens if i know the way it happens and i know the trick then if you come and see me you want to have a set of twins i'm going to charge you heavily because you can get two for one instead of going to the labor room twice you only go once and you have a set of twins and honestly twins are lovely even when they are non-identical to be raising two kids at the same time you know growing up at the same time it's a joy and once i'm done through this few slides mrs ojo will talk about the nursing aspect and um, she's going to ask a number of questions so make sure you are listening i'm not sure whether she's got a gift but make sure you are listening at least it's not just uh, coming here to sing and then dance and rejoice you know it's also good to increase our knowledge base you never know where that knowledge will come handy and you never know whether you're still looking for babies or you're looking for grandkids there might be daddies and mommies or grandpas and grandmas of ibeji or daddies and mommies of ibejis yeah or people are going to be uh siblings of ibejis so all the best and if you are done with child bearing god help you your kids or your grandkids would produce twins for you so um i said how twins are formed yeah all pregnancies start when it's pump fertilizes an egg the common thing is you may have a single baby or you may have multiple babies usually twins are the commonest are the commonest when you talk of twins but sometimes you have triplets and quintuplets and even higher birth babies but those will happen in instances where maybe a woman has been given fertility drugs you know that stimulates ovulation or maybe when people do test two babies and they had to implant a number of uh, eggs that have been fertilized outside the womb into the uterus um, like i said twins about the 90 percent of multiple births um i've mentioned all this before i'm just going to go through this size quickly so that we don't take too much time there are two types of twins the identical twins and the fraternal twins identical twins as the word says they look alike they're the same sex and they are formed from the same egg that divides very early and depending on how early those the egg the fertilized egg divides they may share they, they may share same placenta they may also share same membranes that covers them mrs joe will be talking more about that and if they are fraternal twins they usually have separate placentas and separate uh, uh, coverings or membranes that we call the chorion and the hamnion um yeah Identical twins are formed when one fertilized egg splits and develops into two babies. Non-identical twins are formed when the woman releases two eggs instead of one and both of them get fertilized by 
different spams. So you can see that baby there. Like I said, is in a self-contained apartment. Is the only one that is there. Nobody is struggling with him or her. But in this case, the I'm not sure how big this is from the uh, from the main hall. You can see those two eggs, and then you can see that blue thing on the second line from up. You know, those are the spams, and then it fertilizes the egg. And then those eggs, the third line, they get implanted in the wall of the uterus. And then the line below, you can see those two babies with their head down. Usually the head is down. When the bottom is down, that's the bridge. You know, that comes with its own problems and challenges. And you can see that red thing at the top of that. You know, that's the placenta. So they both have different placentas. Now, this is the case of the identical twins. You can see the egg there, the um, topmost line. You can see that blue thing, that is the sperm. It gets inside it, and then it fertilizes. And you can see, depending on how early the division takes place, to the right, no, to the left, it divides quite early. So they have different placentas and different membranes. But the second and third line, it divides a bit late. So they share the placenta and they share some of the membranes. And the problem with that is that sometimes things don't get shared equally. I don't know why that happens. I mean, someone may give us a thousand dollars and I may say, look, I want to have seven hundred dollars. You can do with three hundred dollars. So there's what we call twin twin transfusion syndrome. And sometimes there's also what we call a vanishing twin syndrome. Someone gets more than a fair share of what they should get. So you might find even a set of twins, one looks big, the other one looks small. And even during the pregnancy, you know, things may get a bit tangled because it's not just you alone. There are two of you and you are struggling for things. But somehow somebody gets a larger share. And somebody gets advantage. It happens in life, even right from the womb. So things do happen. Well, this is another um, slide showing the egg implanting to the wall of the uterus. And towards the right, you can see those red things are the placenta being shared. And then the blue line is the, I mean, the blue thing is the membrane, you know, surrounding the babies. Usually there's this membrane. The baby is hanging in a sack of fluid. There are two membranes covering the baby. So the baby gets suspense. It gets suspended. You know, it's like uh, a shock absorber for the baby. So, um, like I said, nobody knows the biological mechanism that prompts a single fertilized egg to split into two. It still remains a mystery. Research is going on. In fact, there is a research dedicated to twins in Australia. And people who are twins can offer to, you know, it's voluntary to join the research. And the good thing about such is that because twins, they share a lot of genes in common. If someone has a disease, if a twin has a disease, then you should look out for that in the other kid. And God forbid, if maybe identical twins, somebody has a kidney problem, its twin sister, its twin brother will be a very, very good candidate to donate uh, a kidney because you share a lot of genes, so the chances of rejection of that kidney, you know, will be far less than just either a non-related donor or somebody who's a distant donor. So, again, it's good to have two in one. You know, you buy one, you get two. You know, we all like that. But that also comes with challenges, which Mrs. Ojo, as a midwife, will talk more about. The fact that there are two people cohabiting in the same womb, well, they are not fighting, but resources are limited. And again, like I said, because they can share the placenta, they can share the membrane, somebody may get a fear, an unfair share, you know. So sometimes, and, uh, and then it's a lot of stress or a lot of demands on the mother too because they, they, they don't, they, 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 babies, let me put it this way, they are obligate parasites. You know, whatever the mother eats, they take their own first before mommy takes. So that's why a pregnant woman will eat more and more and more and drink more and more because he's not the only one eating the food. 
there are two kids inside. So three of them eating. Only one person is eating, but two of them are waiting to absorb what is there. the mother is eating. But again, because they are twins, the tummy will be bigger than when there's a single baby there. There's a high likelihood of early delivery. And most times when there are problems being suspected, one may be presenting with the head, the other one will be presenting with the bump, which is the bridge. And the doctors may think, look, we don't want to take chances. It is better to do cesarean section and bring the baby out by a surgical operation. So all those risks are far higher with twin pregnancies. It's good to have two in one, but that also comes with challenges of early delivery, um, need for frequent medical checkups to see that both babies are growing normally and everything is fine. And if they are not growing fine, then they may need to get them out of the womb very early. Um, yeah. I think, I think I will squeeze, skip this. So, okay, I mentioned this before that twin pregnancies are like to be delivered earlier. They are more likely to have lower bad weights and premature deliveries are associated with increased risk of number of disorders, including jaundice. That's when the eyes of the baby, you know, turn yellow. And then there's also extra potential for problems during pregnancy and delivery. Well, if you see identical twins, you almost can't resist them to have a look at them. You know, these are just random pictures which I clip off the internet. But it's beautiful when you see two identical twins, you know, especially when they are wearing matching uh, color, I mean, dresses or clothes, you know, they're just beautiful, just beautiful to look at. Thank you for listening. Mrs. Ojo, over to you. Let's give a round of applause to Dr. Kende. He has talked so much about embryology. He has talked so much about genetics. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. Kende. Um, my name is Olajumoke Ojo. I'm a nurse, I'm a midwife, and I'm a maternal child health nurse. I love being there when a new life is coming in. I love being there supporting parents, bringing forth life, and this is what I do. Um, I'm so glad you parents are here this evening. Um, to all the Ibejis in the home, I greet you. To the parents of the Ibejis, I greet you. To Baba Ibeji, to Iya Ibeji, I greet you all. Um, my talk this afternoon will be more about um, the care, um, the maternal care, um, and the journey of the parent with twins. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Kainde, about talking about the um, twins. Um, on my slide there, um, there are two little babies. We assume that those ones are identical twins. Um, with the other little ones in the basket, we don't know if they are boys or girls, you know. They could be dizygotic twins, that's two. That is two embryos being formed. And then the third one, we can see that the blue is a boy and the pink is a girl. So there are two babies in the womb and they've been born. Um, Dr. Kende has really talked about conception and the journey of a woman um, carrying pregnancy. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the maternal complications of um, twins. Um, one thing I want to say is that when a woman is pregnant, just carrying one embryo, the estrogen level, the progesterone level, it's really high. It gives you nausea and vomiting. In our culture, Yorubas, the first thing to know when a woman is pregnant is that she gets sluggish. You know, she doesn't move properly every time. And the neighbors will say, ah, Otiloyu. You know, when you have twin pregnancy, you know, you're carrying two human beings. You're carrying two aliens. And it's like the progesterone level is so high. The estrogen level is so high. And it makes you sluggish. You know, you are tired. You spit a lot. You have lots of nausea. You have vomiting. You see, our mothers in those day, days, they call it early morning sickness. We don't have blood tests so much back home. But when you see a woman spitting early in the morning, not eating well, I'm sure our mothers and our fathers here, even the husbands will say, ah, 
Obiri Aboti Loyu, for our twins, for our mothers. You know, the progesterone is so high, and they have a lot of nausea. They have a lot of vomiting. Another complication I'm going to talk about is increased anemia. Our doctor just spoke about it now. When a woman is, has conceived twins, you are growing two human beings. To our mothers, I say I greet you again. I'm a mother as well. I'm one of nine siblings. I would have loved to have twins as well. My senior sister had twins. My two other sisters, they have twins, but I don't have. And to the house as well. For those of us that are, are other twins, have gone on another journey, you know, have passed on. They are somewhere. I greet you as well. Um, increased, prevalence, increased prevalence of anemia. You grow into human beings. You need hemoglobin. The babies are taking the oxygen from you. They will zap you first, like our, doctors, like our doctor said. The babies will grow. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give mercy on you. You see women getting easily tired. We tell them to check their hemoglobin level. Um, pressure symptoms. You can see on this slide as well. You can see the, um, the first futures. It's coming with the bridge, meaning coming with the bottom. The second twin is coming with the head. One thing we're saying is that even carrying one embryo, one futures, you know, it's heavy. It's about three kilograms, including the placenta maybe another one kilogram, including the amniotic fluid, one kilo. That is five kilograms for a single, a single pregnancy. Imagine a woman carrying twins. She's going like this. There is pressure. There is pressure on her back. The sacral bone, the sacral bone like that, presses down there. You see women holding on their back like this, walking. You know, twins, they are heavy. And you see all that pressure there. Also on the uterine muscles, on the uterine wall, they're coming with stretch mark. The pressure is there. That's part of the complications as well. Um, we talk about malpresentations of the twins as well. Um, Dr. Kendi has mentioned about it. Um, one twin coming with the head first, the other twin coming with the bottom. How do you have a baby like that? Possibly the process is a caesarean section because the risk is very high. Another um, complication for the baby, it's, it's um, prematurity. Prematurity is that a baby that is born before 37 weeks, there is a lot of risk having twins. Because those, baby, those babies are in the uterus, they are trying to negotiate space. They are trying to negotiate oxygen. They are trying to negotiate fluid as well from each other. There is mass presentation, so most of them, would just go through a caesarean section to have a healthy baby. Um, and the last risk factor is um, hemorrhage. Even with a woman who has got a single embryo, a single fetus in her, when the baby is moving, you know, the, you see pregnant women touching on their tummy. Young people here, you are going to get married. Uh, young children, you know, this is going to happen. You get pregnant, the baby is moving. Sometimes the water will break, you have fluid running. Sometimes there is risk of hemorrhage. Then when you are carrying two babies, where the placenta is, when the placenta comes out, two placentas, it's like there is risk of bleeding. There is a wound there and there is risk of bleeding to that woman. Um, we've talked so much about the um, risk. We want to talk about education. Um, maternal education, as soon as a woman gets pregnant, you want to know. You should be asking your obstetrician. You should be asking your GP. If they say it is twins, our doctor has just mentioned here that if it's twins, you ask, is it monozygotic twins or die? You know, is it a single one that has separated into two or is it two eggs that have been fertilized? You, you you need education. You need to ask your doctors. You need to ask your midwives. And it's good to know what is going on for you. Um, nutrition and counseling. Our doctor has said it as well. You're feeding for two. You're eating for two. You're needing energy for two people. You need to just have the time to eat well. There's risk of anemia. Good food, iron, 
food rich in iron, your folic acid, your folic acid, five milligrams every day. It's really good for you. Um, when our mothers are carrying twins, they have multiple blood investigations and they also have multiple ultrasound. You go for morphology every time. You see how these babies are growing, how their arms are growing, how the brain is growing. You go in and out sometimes, it can be very overwhelming. But knowing that this sort of things will be happening, it's good so that you are prepared for it. Um, maternal hospitalization as well, carrying twins, a lot of women get hospitalized in the hospital. I know a family here that when she had her twin pregnancy, she was on bed rest for from 20 weeks. There is loss of income. There is the risk that the husband will be looking after the older children. You know? There is risk that the husband will be in and out of the hospital. There is risk of waiting patiently. How is the second twin growing? How is the third, uh, first twin growing? What's going on? And um, mode of delivery, this is something we have to discuss with your obstetrician. You need to have a voice that since one twin is coming with the head, am I able to have a vaginal bath? If both twins are coming breech, you know, bottom down, the risk is too high. Opt out for it. Go for a safe delivery. Whichever way we have a baby, we don't get priced for it. Either through vaginally or through a cesarean section. What we want is a healthy baby and a healthy mother. Um, a pregnant woman would, um, a woman with twins, will need a lot of rest. A lot of times they will say from about 34 weeks start resting. Sometimes they say they bring forth the birth at 37 weeks. They will say they want to have the babies. They want to bring the babies out. A lot of rest is needed. It's okay to say Baba Beji at night. Give him a hook, you know. Move away from the bed. Give him a hook. Baba Beji, please get me the pillows. Let me support my tummy. These are the rest a woman needs. Communicate with your husband. Talk about it. Twins are beautiful. We've talked about um, the rest. Um, the next thing I just want to talk about, maternal anxiety and the physical reactions to stress. A lot of times when we get to know that we're having twin pregnancy, we're having babies that are twins, there's a lot of stress attached to it. There's a lot, even having one baby is like, is, is my baby moving? I can't feel this baby moving. You're thinking about it constantly. You're thinking about finishing work early. The stress that comes with it. A lot of times is the, is the woman that holds it into herself. You know, she's constantly thinking. And whatever is in her head affects the baby. Imagine the amount of cortisol in our bloodstream when we are pregnant. And when you're carrying twin baby, there's a lot of stress that is attached to it. Stress of prematurity, stress of, stress of the baby being in the special care unit. We need to be prepared for this. But twins are beautiful. You, you pay for one, but you get two. That's good. Um, there are some key points to take home today, talking about twins. Um, twins are beautiful. Um, I greet the parents of twins in this home, and I greet the twins in this house as well. And I want to say thank you for listening to us. Um, we look forward to our generations here, our children having twins, and our um, lovely couples here having twins. And we know that, you know, in our community, when we have children or twins, we support each other. We cook food. We visit each other. You know, we take food. We spend time. We, we even name the child before the child comes. So um, I love genetics. I love family. And I say thank you so much for listening to me. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, like um, my co-presenter said, there will be some questions um, from what we have discussed. They are very simple questions. We want to make it really interactive. We want our children to learn from it. We want to learn ourselves. And we just want to make it fun. And even if we don't get the questions right, it's okay. A lot of research has said 
We don't know why people have twins. And like our doctor just said, um, if we know how to, how to have twins by ourselves, we'll just go for, you know, we'll go, just go for one and we get two. And we'll make our family quickly and so easily. All right then. Um, I put my glasses on. The first questions, please. The first question. What are the factors that increases the odds of having twins? What are the odds or factors? Oh, um, Mr. Badino, thank you. Please, do you, do you want to come over? A round of applause for Mr. Badino. Thank you. You know, our doctor has just said now that we don't know why we have twins. It happens. But there are some odds that makes it happen. Thank you. Thank you. I think there, is, there are lots of factors that um, can cause this. But before my answer, I just want to say I like that idea of buying one and getting two. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have a set of twins, but it runs in my family. Um, but that idea of you buy one, you get two, I love it so much. Um, the factors could be heredity. Um, Abimo, Yoruba will say Abimo. Kind of, it's, it's genetic, it runs in the family. And another thing is the race. We, as we can see in the, it's, it's more, we have it more within the African communities than the other race, races that we have around the world. So I think this is peculiar to Africans. So race could be another reason. Then what we've noticed also is that um, as woman, you know, grows older, there's that possibility of her or having um, a set of twins. Um, that's what I can remember. But that, keep it in mind, that idea of buy one, get two, it's fantastic. So I really like you twins. Thank you so much, Mr. Obadino. Um, Mr. Obadino has said um, most, um, he's, answered, he's answered that question correctly. We talk about race. Um, it, if you look around the world, the number of race, you know, the people that have twins are Africans. It's much more amongst us. Why? We don't know. Another thing is hereditary, like um, our brother said, um, assisted reproduction as well. You know, women who, um, families who are struggling to have babies that are assisted to, you know, a lot of times two or three embryos are transferred. And if two embryos takes, then she's going to have twins. Thank you so much, Mr. Obadino. Um, another question, there are two types of twins that our doctor mentioned. Who is going to talk about it? Yep, yeah, you come through. Yes. What's your name? Come through. Yes. Good girl. A round of applause for our, for our Yoruba student. Thank you. What's your name? Angela. Um, Angela wants to tell us the types of twins. Good girl. Go for it. Fraternal and identical. Fantastic. She has talked about fraternal and identical twins. So the, the fraternal twins are the two embryos that, you know, the sperm fertilize this egg, the sperm fertilize this egg. Thank you. That's the fraternal. And the identical one is the one embryo that breaks into two and they will be boys or girls. Thank you so much, Angela. A round of applause for Angela. Thank you. And the last question, who is going to answer the last question? I'm just going to throw it up. Um, mention three points to take home today. Three points to take home today. Natasha, I'm just going to call you. Come on through. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> Natasha, come on through. Thank you. A round of applause for Natasha. Oh, my word. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Um, most twins are born healthy. Um, most twins are born healthy. Fantastic. Um, twin pregnancies are high risk usually, so they need some more monitoring. Yes. yes. And oh, I don't remember the last point. Um, oh, I don't know. Something else. <laughs> Natasha said um, most twins are born healthy. So if you look around us, we have twin children here, and they are born healthy. And she also mentioned that they need close monitoring because they are two, 
They need lots of blood tests. They need lots of ultrasound to check the morphology, the growth, and the development. Thank you so much. A round of applause for Natasha. Thank you so much. Um, I'll pass the microphone. Oh, our brother wants to come and say something. Thank you so much. Sorry, what's your name, sir? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. My question is just a matter of observation. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, please, your house. I have noticed that conjoined twins is unheard of in Africa. Uh, I have observed is sometimes seen around certain race, okay. among certain race, rather. Is there any known factor that is responsible for this? Thank you so much, our brother. Um, the question our brother has asked is that, um, if I'm right, sorry, if I'm wrong, please correct me. He said conjoined twins is common in Africa. Is not common in Africa. Okay, is not common in Africa. So why is that happening? I'll pass the microphone to our doctor. Well, uh, we live in a day and time when we talk about evidence-based medicine. You can make an observation. It may be a valid observation, but until you have subjected that observation to uh, controlled studies, you really can't make conclusions. I remember several years ago while I was doing my internship, we actually had a mother who had a set of twins. And I think, yeah, I'm not sure, were they joined together? No, they had congenital deformities. But it does happen in Africa. I don't have answers to the fact whether it happens more among the Caucasians than among the blacks. Well, they used to call them Siamese twins. And the simple reason why that happens is that just like with even a normal pregnancy, twin pregnancies, sometimes the cleavage or the division of the cells may not be perfect. So you have kids, sometimes they are joined at their skulls, sometimes they are joined at their thorax, sometimes they are joined at their backs, and you can't deliver such babies normally, you know, via the uh, genital tract of the woman. They have to be brought out by a surgical operation. And I'm not sure whether you remember, many of you have heard about Ben Kassin. He's an African-American. Uh, he's a neurosurgeon. He had to do a very complex operation to bring out a set of things which brought him international fame because it's a very complex procedure, especially when they are joined at the brain or they join at the chest. You know, you want to be careful how you separate because if you're not careful, you will damage the brain of one and the tissue may be so fused or so joined together that separating them and getting each of them to be viable and alive can be a very daunting task. Usually you have a set of specialists, neurosurgeons, pediatric surgeons, neonatologists, anesthetists, not just anesthetists, but anesthetists that are sub-specialized in giving anesthesia to newborn babies, you know, intensivists, because you can't just separate those babies and send them home or send them to general ward. They have to be in intensive care, hooked to different life support machines. So it's a very complicated thing. They used to call them Siamese twins, but now they call them conjoined twins. It does happen in Africa. I am pretty sure of that. I've seen pictures of babies who are joined together, you know, but you can be sure that except you have very good facilities, they're not going to make it. And probably because a lot of them don't make it, that's why we assume that it doesn't happen in Africa. I think, so a couple of years ago, there was a set of twins that were brought from Malaysia. They couldn't do the operation there. It was done here in Australia. And they were very happy that Australia provided that technical expertise in the medical field to separate those kids. I think up to today, those kids are doing fine. So my point in summary is it does happen in Africa. I don't have facts whether it happens more among the Caucasians compared to the blacks. But when it does happen, require top-notch facilities and highly specialized people to handle it. Otherwise, those kids won't make it. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, yeah. Oh, another question, but Mrs. Adetifa is telling me our time is up. Um, Mr. Fred Ali, please, can you come quickly? Thank a round of applause for Fred Ali. Thank you, thank you Mrs. Ojo. My name is Fred Alale. Um, thank you. 
Um, look, mine is not a question, actually. It's more about a Yoruba culture and twins. I was talking to a woman today to say, <clears throat> she said, what are you doing today? And I said, I'm going to Gippsland. We're going to a twins celebration. And she was like, twins celebration? I said, yes. I said, twins are special, especially in Yoruba culture. And I said, because one thing we've not talked about today is that twins actually have a special name. They're called Taye the firstborn, and the second one is called Cain Day. So there's already a name that they, they have, even before, when you know, as soon as they're born, you know that. So whenever you meet somebody and says, I'm Taye, you already know you're a twin. If you say, I'm Cain Day, you know you're a twin and you're the second twin. So it's just a story that I feel is quite unique to Yoruba. I'm not sure of any other cultures that I just thought we should share about names, unique names of twins. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Ali. Um, a lot of talks about twins. A lot. We've just talked about the embryology of twins, the genetics of twins, and the maternal care. Thank you so much, um, Mrs. Abosedi. Thanks for listening to our talk, and have a great evening.